I've seen these uh, for sale um, for a while, but I've not really succumbed to the temptation to buy one yet because they're still quite expensive. However, I did succumb to the temptation. I bought one, and I have to say it's fantastic. When you see this lit, it's. Uh, I'm not going to show you it lit because it's, it will just swamp out the camera. It's very bright. It spreads light, light in all directions. It's a good colour. And the whole lamp just stays cool, even though it draws dead on 4 watts. It's a really attractive lamp. Now, this is using the LED filaments that are on glass. Um, and there's only phosphor on one side, and you can see the slight patterning through them. Um, but um, enough of that. It is an attractive lamp. It almost hurts me to take it to bits. But I'm sorry, it's going to have to come to bits. And I'm thinking that initially I'm going to try going in like this and peel it open like a banana. An electric banana made of metal with lots of sharp bits, but a banana nonetheless. I've got contingency plans here. If I can't open it this way, I do have a Dremel. Standing by, ready for action. I'm trying, going to try not to burst this lamp as well. I don't want, particularly want to break the globe because I want to try it with my own circuitry. So this is uh, so far. It's going okay, I think. Now, Electron Update took one of these to bits. Oh, here we go. And it has had a switch mode power supply in it. I don't think there's much in this one. I'm expecting, I'd kind of, in a way I'd like it to be a capacitive dropper. But I've got an open mind in this, I don't know what it is actually. Right now I'm not seeing a lot at all. I'm seeing an electrolytic capacitor at the back. And I have to say, this lamp had no significant flicker. Yeah, this is looking very empty. I don't think there's a switch mode supply in here, but, but we'll find out in due course. Hmm. I'm going to liberate that wire, which is going onto the circuit board. I really think this could be a capacitive dropper. It could even be, given the UK voltage is 230, 240 volts. It may actually be uh, just a resistive dropper. I'm not 100% sure. That would be interesting if it was. That would be the ultimate simplicity for driving LED lamps. I can see a bridge rectifier. I can see the capacitor. Oh, I can see a wee chip in there. And a resistor. Hmm. That's really not much circuitry, is it? That's the soldered connection onto the side. Okay, let's sweep this stuff out of the way. Oh, I wonder what that is. It's the in heat shrink. That's a heat shrink sleeve around the outside. scrape off some of this um, outer cement. I wonder if they use the same stuff as uh, for the lamps, because technically speaking it doesn't have to be at such a high temperature. Ooh, here we go. But 
but it is very brittle, suggesting it is the same sort of cement they've traditionally used for lamps, and to be honest, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Given that I think these are being made in traditional lamp factories, which is why they're making of glass, and, and the fact it's made of glass is really, I, I like that a lot. So there are four wires coming down. There are, uh, the filament seem to be wired as a pair of two in series. And this, how have they got this so close, this circuit board? I don't actually see um, that they've soldered directly onto the... I don't see that they've pushed the circuit board up against it and soldered it, but I might be wrong. Intrigued with this little chip. Well, this is getting a lot better as we go. Look. Only seeing a couple of solder points, so let's uh, desolder one in. The other two may just actually be looped in the series again, so all four of those filaments may actually be in one big series circuit. Righty ho. Intriguing. Right now I want to connect my wee voltage multiplier circuit to that. Mm -mm. Radio, so really not much on this circuit board. There's a smoothing capacitor, there's that resistor which is 47 ohms, the rectifier, and then this chip. Radio, I think I have to get a little microscope out and see what this chip says because this is quite interesting. Close to it. it does have a number on it, that's a good start. Turn it over so I can read it up the right way. SM two zero eight two B SM two zero eight two B um can't really make out the logo. The logo is a circle divided into sort of pads, five pads. Um, then it's got 00ND dot nine six at zero three C. Then under that, lots of text in this. Five N R L one four oh three six three guessing that might be the manufacturing code oh that's a g3 sorry one four oh three g3 so i think that's what's important here is the sm two zero eight two b sm two zero eight two b i'm just going to note that down that you know I wonder if they're maybe just using uh, sort of they're using a resistor as a, a limiter and then you know uh, pulsing it I'm not 100% sure actually the resistor is actually straight in the input it's going to the rectifier the output from the rectifier is almost certainly going to the capacitor I would think and then it must just be controlling the LED filaments. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% sure about this. I'm going to have to explore this further. I'm going to have to go and look that up online. But anyway, in the meantime, let's uh, solder the LED lamp now. See, do you know what I've just done? 
I didn't check polarity, did I? That wasn't clever. So uh, I might actually be just about to blow all these filaments, LED filaments up. Because I don't know what's actually positive and what's negative. This has been, I don't know if it's been evacuated or they've just manufactured in the same style, but they have sealed this off. Um, there was speculation is that there might be a gas inside, and it looks as though there could be something, but the one way to find out is to crack that seal and see if it goes hiss. Nope. Didn't really hiss, did it? Didn't hear a thing. And that seal is now broken, I think. Is it? Or is that just the pivot came off the end? I'll just crack a wee bit more off. No, absolutely nothing. I didn't hear anything there. Rightio, so can I work out what polarity is? No, I can't. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, well, random guess it is. What's the worst could happen? It could fry all the LEDs, but as I've taken it to bits now, I see one of these leads. Uh, I see both the leads are sleeve. I'm talking rubbish. All right, OK, let's try this out and see what I can do. Didn't think about polarity at all. That's quite annoying. So let's tin those leads and make a wild guess. I mean, there's a 50-50 chance I'll get it right. And if I don't get it right, then it may actually knacker the lamp. It may actually damage the LEDs by reverse biasing them to high voltage. Although if they're all well balanced, uh, they should be OK. Because then um, I wouldn't be able to exceed the reverse voltage, the combined reverse voltage, if it's technically speaking about 5 volts per chip. Ooh, this is a wee bit fittery. I was surprised that given the rating of 4 watts and that each of these filaments is supposedly a 1 watt rating, I was quite surprised that the um, lamp didn't actually seem to get all that hot. The base certainly didn't get hot. Right here. Shall we try this? One connection. Two connection. Yay! That will... F oh, it doesn't... Isn't f did it flicker initially? Hmm, because it is running the full voltage sort of thing, that the, the full... I think the voltage across that... Well, let's measure the voltage across that. This will be choppy, it's not smoothed. So, um, DC voltage... Across that, he said, carefully avoiding touching live bits. 100 and... Oh, hold on. Waiting for a good connection here. Not getting a good connection. 189 volts. So 189 volts, which is kind of rough because um, 189 volts divided by, and there's four of the filaments, equals about 50 volts of filament. But of course, um, that voltage won't necessarily be too accurate because um, it, these will just be riding. There'll, there'll be a modest flicker on them, visible if I shake it, which I can see a slight flicker, because at that sort of voltage, it's only riding the top part of the full wave rectified sine wave. But that's quite interesting. I, yeah, that's neat, isn't it? I kind of like that. I kind of like it actually just glowing dully like this. And uh, I don't even think that will register on my power meter. It's registering as 0.3 of a watt. 0.2 it's gone to, so I'm not even sure how accurate that will be. But it's not got much at all. And yet that, to me, looking at that now, is glowing brightly. You know, it's actually glowing brightly, not to light the room, but as a visual looking at it, at the filaments, that looks just like the typical decorative lamp with the zigzaggy filaments. Yeah, and I can also see the LEDs, so I'm going to count them and I'll leave a wee note, in the, I'll leave a wee note about that uh, afterwards. But yeah, that's neat. I quite enjoyed that, actually. And now I'm going to go and look up that chip. What's the capacitor, incidentally? 
400 volts, 4.7 megafarad. Typical one you'd find uh, in a compact fluorescent lamp, very generic. Yes, I'm away to do some investigation.